Hey everybody, welcome to part three of algorithms. Uh, in this video, we're gonna do another example, and this example is gonna deal with a topic that is extremely important in computer science. And it's something that you've actually used before. You've used it when you get on the internet and you, do, uh, you look for things. You use it when you get a map out and you find directions from one place to the other. And really, it all comes down to search. Okay. And search, in this case, we're going to look at a subset of search called pathfinding. Okay, so pathfinding is finding the distance from A to B. And it's, it usually uses some sort of graph, uh, underlying graph or some other tools, but we're not going to talk much about that stuff. We're just going to talk about what is pathfinding and we're going to do an example using that. So places you might find pathfinding is, as I said, in a mapping program. Uh, you might find it in video games, depending on the game you're doing. Uh, if you're doing pretty much actually any game that I think about it, most modern games that involve some sort of pathfinding. Uh, if you're playing StarCraft or you're playing like in, if you're in StarCraft, you click a character and move it to one other location, then that character's got to find its way around buildings and around uh, landmarks and other things, and it's got to find the fastest way to get to the other place. So it's always doing some sort of pathfinding. When you're playing a first-person shooter and the guys are coming after you, they're using pathfinding to go through doorways and, and different things like that. Okay, so pathfinding is extremely important. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail as far as the actual pathfinding, though. Uh, what I mean by actual pathfinding is the actual algorithms that pathfinding uses, because those are much more complex. If you want to go to the advanced programming section uh, later on, you might you might find some information there about uh, pathfinding and the A star algorithm and things like that. Okay. But uh, for now, we're just going to talk about search and basics of pathfinding, and we're going to use it to create an algorithm of our own. So the first thing we need to do is look at our grid here, and this is going to be our world. And our world is going to... Actually, I don't want to use... I'm going to use something a little bit more... And it shows up a little bit better. And what this will be is just a grid where this is like one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so notice I'm not going on the lines, I'm going on the boxes, because I'm going to put things inside the boxes, and we're going to move those around. So let's go ahead and uh, start off with something here, and let's pick a, a location to start. So I'm going to pick, I don't know, I'll pick this location to start, and let's go ahead and uh, let's put our character right here. I wonder if I can get a, I don't know if my, well, close enough. Okay, so we have a very poorly drawn stick figure here. Oh, he's got some hands and some feet. Yeah, there we are. Okay, and the stick figure needs to get to some location on the screen. Okay, and let's make the location, let's make it right here. Okay, so this location, what is this location? This location is going to be, actually, let me make that. This location will be a pot of gold or a treasure here. Let me put some other colors in there. Treasure is multicolored treasure. Okay, so we've got our treasure here. All right, and we want to get this guy up to here. Now, it looks pretty easy. We can just say, all right, yeah, just go diagonal and then go right. Uh, we're going to make it so there's no diagonals, so our rules are a little bit easier. So we just have up, down, left, and right. And those are the possible directions you can move. Uh, you can do anything you want in this case as, as far as directions, but we want to try to find the fastest way to get there. So uh, whether that's up, down, left, right, whatever you want, 
uh, we want to find maybe not the fastest but we want to find a fast way to get there and since we only can go up or down left or right we're gonna start with those rules uh, what we want to do though is we want to use these numbers here because we've, we've given a numerical representation of of the grid and so we probably want to use those in our description so let's start with a, an algorithm that describes the upward movement so our the upward movement or downward movement will be our vertical movement and we'll start with that so each time I'm gonna do my character's gonna move he's gonna start here at this first rule the vertical movement rule and what should the vertical movement rule be well it probably should be if my character's location okay or the player's location so I'm gonna start with so if player and I'm gonna write player uh, y value so player y okay uh, if player y is let's say if player y is less than the treasure value of y then I should make the y one bigger would you agree I should I should move the character up at least in this direction so if player y is less than treasure treasure y then what I want to do is uh, plus one player y okay. so that makes sense right if the player is less than the treasure then move it over one and if the if the guy was up here I'd want to minus one so I would want to say player y is greater than I don't know why I put the u there don't want to write the s is greater than treasure y then minus one player y okay makes sense right it's a pretty good rules we got here Okay, let's uh, let's look at the horizontal rule now. So now I have horizontal, okay. and the horizontal rule, as you might have already figured out, it's actually going to be really similar to this rule. So if player X is less than uh, treasure X then I'm gonna I'm gonna write this over here this time then player X um, minus one uh, I'll write it great here let's go back here uh, minus uh, sorry plus one player X okay and the same thing the opposite here if uh, player X is greater than treasure X then go ahead and minus one from player X okay so these are our four different rules and using those four different rules, we should be able to get to our treasure. So this is this is an algorithm. Now I can the algorithm, what I want to do, and I'm not gonna write this part down. I want to start up here, I want to go through all of these rules, and I want to keep doing this until I am on the treasure. So that's the algorithm is start here, do this, 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 until we reach the treasure. So we'll just keep going to the start and we'll keep repeating these four rules and if they if they apply we'll do them so let's go ahead and do this and see how our guy moves so I'm gonna pick a different color here alright so is player Y less than treasure Y uh, it is so the player is going to move up to here I okay, keep going down player Y well it's not greater than treasure player X is less than treasure X yes 
So that means I move one this way, but it's not greater than, so I do this. And I come back up here, and once again, yep, I'm gonna move up, and this one doesn't apply, second one, third one still applies, so I'm increasing my player X. Uh, this one doesn't apply, first one once again applies, second one, nope, third one, yes again, and I come back through, you see the pattern obviously goes here, and once I get here, now the only rule that applies is the player X is less than treasure X, because treasure X is at 6-6, six, six. and now I'm here, so I'm going to move straight across till I'm on the treasure. So that is pretty easy algorithm to follow. And if I take that treasure, and let's see, I I put a new guy here. Let's make a let's make a different guy over here. Maybe I have a person here, and I were to make the treasure, I don't know, over here. Then the other rules would apply. So for example. Uh, well, this one still applies as player, the Y is less than, so I'm going to go up, and I would go over, and I go up, and I go over, and I go up, and I go over, and I go up, and then eventually I would come over here to the treasure. Okay, so no matter where I put this treasure on the grid, everything works just fine. Alright, so let's look at a, another example, and this is what you're going to be doing for the practice stuff, so I'm just going to show you why this algorithm is not necessarily the best. So let's go down to another grid here. And let's go ahead this time and I'll put in our character and I'll, I'll put him down similar place down here. Okay, let's make this so this is this will be my wife here. She's gonna find the treasure this time. And let's put the treasure still kind of in the same area up at the top. Okay. I'm not going to draw all the stuff inside this time. But let's also say that there is a lake. Okay. So this is a lake that is impossible to cross. So we cannot cross this lake in order to get there. If we use our old algorithm, we're going to go up to the right, up to the right, up. And now we want to go right, but we can't go right because there is a lake here. Okay. Uh, we could, we want to go around the lake, but our algorithm currently will get us right here. And then we're going to get stuck because we can't go right. And the Y rules don't apply and the X rule can't be done. So we have, we're stuck with a problem here. So how do we solve something like this? Well, we can still use the grid system, but there's lots and lots of different ways that you can solve this. Uh, you can keep track of information on the grid. So let's say, for example, that every time I enter a square, I increment. So this is a one, and let's say my character moves here, so this would be a one. And this character moves here, this would be a one. And now my character wants to go up, so it goes up, and this is a one. And this would be a one. And this would be a one. And now I'm trying to go over maybe this way. Uh, but I can't go that way. So I then, maybe I randomly pick a direction. So let's say I randomly pick this direction, I go over here, and that's a one. But I realize that made me become farther away from this. So my character looks at the four boxes around it and it says, wait, I've already been here because there's a one here. So maybe I should go to some place that doesn't have a one. So I'll go up here. I go up here and now I put a one. And same thing happens. I'm now a little bit further away from the box. I want to head towards the box. So this time I go back here and that's a one. And then I end up here and now I want to go closer to the box. So once again, I go here, I go one, uh, and I've already been here, so I can't go back. I don't can't go that way, so I go up here, and that's a one. And then it, my character eventually ends up on the side with the box, just because it's already been in these locations. And 
what I can do then is even if I were to put this here, now the character would come back around here. Uh, it might, you might want to say, you might want to like say, is it further away? If it's too far away, then go ahead and go to another box. So maybe the character would move back along this line and eventually decide it's okay to come in here. So then it would make that a two and it would be okay to come here. And this is a three or sorry, two, and then a one and so on. So by putting information in these boxes, I'm inc I can increase it one by one and make a box with a big number less, I don't know, less perhaps uh, enticing than a box with a low number or no number. So this is, this would be weighting the path. You're waiting, adding a weight to the path that the character is going. Uh, alternatively, you could say, well, when I'm stuck, use the old algorithm, and when I'm stuck, just start going randomly for five moves. Maybe make the, the guy randomly move for five different moves, and you just roll a dice, a four-sided dice, and then pick a new direction. Okay, so there's lots of different ways you could make an algorithm to find this object here. But it really is just, the whole pattern is this. If something, then something else. If something, then something else. This is just you testing uh, the conditions. If there's nothing above me, go then go up. If there's nothing below me, then go down. Okay, And you could have as many of these as you want doesn't really matter uh, as long as the algorithm can be followed so usually less is better and in our example up here I mean we don't have a whole lot we just have four rules and things work so in the practice what you're gonna look at is I'm gonna give you some maps and then you're gonna create an algorithm to get the character to the other side and you want to use as little as few rules as possible and you want those rules that if I were to give you another map, then the character could still find the way to the end. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is this is the end of just kind of your introduction to algorithms. Uh, later on, we're going to talk about more algorithms from a coding sense. We're also going to talk about how to uh, take pseudocode and flowcharts uh, and either use that to create code or use that to understand an algorithm okay so this is the end of the introduction and now we're going to start moving into the more the more heavy computer science related stuff okay so if you have questions about this uh, then please leave them on the youtube comments or on my website and i look forward to seeing you in the next video